Hi, Laurent. I'm Philip, and uh, we're going to try and show you how to do some homebrew today. Here is where we're going to start by steeping these uh, specialty grains, uh, which means they need to soak for about 10-15 minutes in water that's about 160 to 150 degrees. So what we do is we do this in the kitchen with a smaller pot uh, that allows us to get this started and then start the rest of the water in a bigger part out, pot out in the garage. So let's fire it up the beast. So we do our boils in a 10 gallon pot, which means we're boiling about nine gallons when the whole thing is going. And especially at that volume, having a propane burner is absolutely essential. So now we are basically transferring the grains and what we want to do is end up taking out all the solid grains that are left that have been steeping for about half an hour and uh, end up with what is basically just a really unbelievably delicious smelling brown liquid. Uh, really hard to describe just how good this smells and one of the nice things about it is this, this is safe to do in your house if you bring it home because this smells good. You get into trouble sometimes with the hops. <laughs> the hops are the reason why it's good to do it outside or in another building if you can but nobody's gonna have a problem with this smell in the house because it smells really really good. Alright so at this point having strained out most of the grain uh, we are now going to pour the steeping liquid through the filter. And you can see there's still a good deal of grains in there. Now what we're doing is we're starting to top off the pot. We're generally going to have a boil of about nine gallons in this pot because it's a 10 gallon pot, but we need to leave a little bit of headroom uh, at the top to make sure that as the boiling happens, um, and then especially when you throw in the hops, you tend to get some foaming that happens. We're adding a fair amount of water now because we know it needs to go in. Once we get this up to a boil, we'll be adding the malt extract. We'll be topping that up once that's in and we know exactly how much we've got. So now that we're actually waiting for that water to come up to the boil, now is usually a good time to make sure that our buckets are clean and ready to go. We're actually going to do this in two stages. We're going to use a pretty powerful detergent called PBW that is designed to clear beer equipment, and then we will sterilize it with a product called Iodophore, which is basically a dilute iodine solution. You can pour it out and you can let it air dry, and that's all you need to do. As you can see, the beginning of our work is now coming close to a boil. So we're going to let it reach a full boil, and then once it does, we're going to cut out the flame. So we've got here, uh, is the malt extract, uh, which is basically the grains that have been converted in a factory, um, and it turns them into a thick syrup. That's a lot like molasses um, or uh, almost a honey. So we're going to pour it in. You can see it's really thick. Uh, we found that the easiest thing to do is actually just to ladle some of the hot wort back into here and rinse it out a couple times. That helps get it a lot. It's a lot easier than digging in there with the spatula. This is all going to get boiled again for an hour before uh, it goes into the bucket, so it'll all be sterile by the time it's done. And again, it's very, very important that we're doing all this off the boil um, because what you don't want to do is to have any of the malt settle to the bottom and burn um, before it's thoroughly mixed in. And you want to be careful because uh, the hot water in here and the steam will tend to build up a little bit of pressure inside, so. And you can see that pressure building up. And there we go. Pretty much a clean bucket. Now that we basically brought nine gallons with all the extract up to a full boil, it is time to put in the hops. Hops really have two ways to contribute to the flavor of your beer. The first is that they have alpha acids in them that actually contribute bitterness, and they have essential oils that contribute flavor and aroma. So the hops we put in now are gonna boil for an hour, which is basically gonna drive off almost all of those oils. So these hops that we're putting in right now are really gonna to contribute to the bitterness of the beer. Later towards the end of the boil, we're gonna add a couple of different types of hops at different times, and those will contribute less to the bitterness and much more to the flavor and the aroma of the final beer. Here's an ounce and a half of warrior hops that are going to go in and boil for an hour. And when you add in your hops, you'll see how that starts to boil up a little bit, right? So you want to add them gradually because if you add them all at once, especially when you've got a double batch going like this, uh, you can end up with a lot of foaming coming up and actually over the side of the pot. And now is really when it starts to smell like beer.
So right now what we're doing is we are sterilizing the wort chiller. Um, and the wort chiller is really nothing but about 60 feet of copper tubing that's uh, in a great big coil that's half inch copper tubing. Um, and as you can see, it's got two hoses coming out of it, two plastic hoses coming out of it. One of them hooks up to a garden hose and the other just runs out, it's just an outlet hose. And when it's time to cool the work, we're actually going to be running water through that and we're going to be dunking that directly into the work, which is why we need to sterilize it right now. All right, and now we're gonna gradually add in the second stage of hops. And this is the Amarillo. And because this is gonna boil for three minutes before we cool it down, it's gonna contribute some bitterness, but a fair amount of the oils are also gonna remain. So this is generally what you would call a flavoring hop, since you'll be able to taste much more of the specific hops in the final product than you're gonna be able to for the warrior that we put in the very beginning. All right, it's go time. Right. So now we've added the citra hops at the very end, and we are now killing the flame. Let's give it a good stir. So these final hops, which are actually a very aromatic kind of hop, right, really not gonna contribute any bitterness at all, but they are gonna bring a lot of flavor to the beer, a lot of aroma to the beer. The beer's gonna smell like this. So now we've got the work chiller on. We've just got a garden hose hooked up to it and it's pumping water through. Um, and uh, the difference right now in the two handles between the one that's coming in, which is pretty cold, and the one that's coming out, which is really hot, uh, it's pretty striking. Uh, moving around like this tends to help circulate it and tends to help a lot more heat go through. <laughs> and we're down to about 100 degrees in just not even five minutes. Yeah. It's a little bit of an investment to either get or to make a work chiller like this but it makes an enormous difference. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time using an easy to read thermometer like this. <laughs> yeah, I think we're there. We're right at 75. Awesome. So here we have probably about nine gallons of uh, cooled wort that is ready to be transferred into a couple of buckets. Um, and then once it's in the buckets, we will pitch the yeast. So one of the first tricks that we learned a little while ago that works out pretty well is to try and create a whirlpool in the wort before we siphon it. So all of what's called the trub collects at the bottom in the middle of your pot. And as you siphon, if you come down the side, uh, you tend to pull out a lot less of what's basically spent hops and just whatever else has been accumulating and anything else that's in there. All right, so the whirlpool slowed down. It's time to do some siphoning. Now you're gonna see why this is so handy. Rather than trying to start a siphon with your mouth, uh, which can introduce some, uh, you know, infection to the beer, um, this pump system basically allows you to start it mechanically. Um, and then uh, we are just pouring it into the buckets. So here you can see the trub on the bottom of the bucket. We've tried to leave most of it as much as we can without leaving too much of the wort down there. And now we've got two buckets, each with about three and a half almost gallons of wort in there. So there's about seven gallons left in the bucket by the time we're done doing all the boiling. And now we're gonna to top them off with water to exactly five gallons. And it's actually important to make sure to do this before we check the gravity of the final beer because this wort right here is much denser than we actually need it to be because it's boiled down so much and we need to basically redilute it to the correct concentration and then we can check the gravity of our beer. So now it's time to check the gravity, the original gravity of our mix. So we're sterilizing a cup in IOTA 4. Oh, and this is 1.0. Uh, like six, two, yeah, six, right. four, uh, which is very high. 
um, not out of the park high. high gravity beer, it's, it's... <laughs> Other beers are higher, but that's about as high as we've made. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so this tells us the density of the wort at this point. And this is actually a very important measurement to take for two reasons. The first is that it's going to give you an idea whether or not it basically turned out right, since any recipe is going to give you a target gravity that you should be at for this point. And then also the difference between this original gravity, no matter what it is, and the final gravity when you measure it after fermentation is done, is what's going to tell you how alcoholic the beer is. So you really want to make sure that you're measuring it both times so whether or not you've made exactly what the recipe expected you'll have at least have a rough idea of the alcohol content of your beer oh that's good mm. that's really good so this is your chance to taste it what you pulled off the sample for the gravity you do not want to put this back in your word obviously right. it's gonna be very sweet compared to where it's gonna be because these sugars haven't been yeastified and fermented and turned to alcohol yet uh, but you can start to get a sense of how it's gonna end up especially as you do this more and more if you overhopped it or you made any mistakes, um, you'll probably be able to tell at this point. But uh, basically, if it tastes good at this point, but a little bit sweet, then you're in good shape. <laughs> and this is what's called a yeast starter. And it means rather than just pitching in the yeast straight out of the vial when you get it from the store, you actually build a simple wort and put the yeast into it a couple days ahead of time. And it means that not only do you have much more yeast that you're pitching into it, but the yeast is active and really ready to go as soon as you put it into the wort. It's pretty simple to do. It's not too hard to find out the instructions of how to do it, but it's not something you need to do, especially when you're starting. Um, because we've got so much yeast starter, we're actually going to divide it into two mason jars um, to get, just try to get it relatively even. Airlocks have been soaking in Iota for a while, again to make sure they're sterile. Um, to err on the side of caution, we actually usually top them off with a little bit of the Iota for water. I'm going to use vodka from now on. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah, we prefer that you can use vodka. Here we have Phil's awesome fermentation closet that he set up. And this is something we learned, which is a lot easier to put the water in the airlocks after you get them to where they need to be, instead of putting it in early and then trying to cart them around with uh, water sloshing around. There we go. So they're going to sit for a week at 68 degrees. Then uh, we will be transferring them to Last Carboys.